we were trying to actually go out and catch some sharks. We were looking for some target species to tag. Uh, we caught none. <laughs> we did catch a, uh, a small southern stingray um, that was missing its tail, uh, so that's evidence that that stingray at least found a shark at some point recently. We go out there, see what we can catch, take the environmental measurements, and then go back and correlate with the number and type of sharks that we caught. The idea with behind that is, if we get enough of that data, that we can literally map parts of the estuary that are important to sharks. Just because the conditions are right doesn't necessarily mean the sharks are there. And also just because they're there doesn't necessarily mean they're hungry. The kind of gear we use, a baited long line, is really going to attract sharks that, are, uh, that feel like feeding. So uh, the sharks could have moved on or we could be in kind of a lull. Uh, we're not sure why, maybe it's just everything is uh, kind of comfortable in its environment. We can't explain the large number of bites, but pretty much any time we go in the ocean, there are sharks in very close proximity to us. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we're entering their realm, we're entering their world. Shark bite's still a very, very rare event. So rare, in fact, that it's actually very difficult to get a, uh, any kind of statistical analysis on the bites themselves. Whether or not a shark is dangerous depends on a lot of factors. Uh, most sharks are actually uh, only reach a maximum size of less than four feet. Just because that uh, species is there or because the conditions are right for that species to be there, you're still about 99% likely to uh, have that shark just swim right by you without you even noticing. There's lots of theories out there, lots of speculations. Um, increased water temperatures early in the year brought a lot more animals, both uh, prey and predators to the area. The air temperatures went up from mid 80s to uh, over 100 degrees for weeks at a time, and the water temperature went up right with it. My hypothesis is that the sudden increase in temperatures caused the migration of marine species that we have normally here in North Carolina to occur kind of more rapidly than it usually does. We know shark populations globally are continuing to decline, that on any given day, an average of 275,000 sharks are killed, or 100 million sharks a year are harvested globally. So we know populations are continuing to decline. North Carolina is fortunate we have a very prolific coastline. One thing about the, uh, the presence of sharks in North Carolina is that it's a good sign about our water quality and our, uh, our ecosystem here. And we should be somewhat proud of the fact that we've created decent shark habitat.